The latest scandal uh, um, having to do with the origins of Christianity is the uh, Jesus' wife papyrus. Along comes this papyrus that says, wife. You can't translate it any other way, wife. But they had a problem. If I would have come up and told the world, hey, look, somebody found this Jesus papyrus and it says wife, then they would have said, oh, that guy, he's the naked archaeologist. He's not even naked and he's not an archaeologist and all kinds of, he's looking for sensations. He's got to make money. We can go after that guy. Here the problem was the person who brought it to the world is Professor Karen King. I mean, she's a big shot in the world of New Testament scholarship. She is at Harvard Divinity School, and she's no slouch. She got big shots on her side before she went to the world. She got Professor Roger Bagnell from Columbia, one of the top three experts on ancient papyri, to say, yeah, this is cool, this is kosher, this is good, this is authentic. And then what did she do? She announced it as a paper at the seminar for Coptic studies. I mean, this, you know, this is not the super, this is the Super Bowl of Coptic studies. And it was right across from the Vatican. So she got it all. She, super culture. Nobody can attack her. Right? Ron. Even Professor King didn't realize that the minute you challenge people's theology, the sleeper agents of Christian theology, these C-list scholars, because they're not in her league. She's an A-list scholar. And these guys who just sit around in their underwear by their blog stations all day, they went in and they started saying, forgery. Now, if you say something is a forgery and Professor King brought it to the world, what are the options? Either she forged it or she's just kind of not so smart and got fooled by a forger. They were kind to her. Professor Morton Smith from Columbia some decades ago, he came up with something like this, and they said, you're a forger, Morton. And he went to his grave, the poor guy, who was arguably the number one New Testament scholar of his age, with this charge of forgery over his head. But they were kinder, maybe because she's a lady, to Professor King. They didn't say she's a forger. They're not saying that now. They're saying she's not, not that smart because she got fooled by a forger. So now we have an anonymous forger out there, and he's forging papyri. And what does he want to do, this guy? He wants to prove that Jesus was married. Now, why does this guy want to prove that? To make money. Well, did anybody sell this thing? Has anybody put it up on eBay for a lot of money? How is he making money? And what's the argument? What's the argument that it's a forgery? Well, the argument is like, it goes like this. It's kind of similar to this non-canonical uh, gospel called the Gospel of Thomas. Hello? It's similar to another gospel that makes it a forgery? If that was the case, every single one of the gospels would be a forgery because Matthew and Mark and are a lot alike. Then the R second argument is exactly like the Gospel of Thomas. And they find a couple of words that are exactly alike. But wait a minute, the Gospel of Thomas doesn't say wife, and this one does say wife, so how is it exactly the same? Well, it's exactly the same, except for the parts that aren't. That makes sense. It's, something's exactly the same. She looks exactly like her, except she's a little taller, and that one's short. She's blonde, she's dark. What does that mean? Then the other one, one of my favorites, is that it's a forgery. Why is it a forgery? Because it looks authentic. Somebody actually made it disjointed to look like torn pieces of papyrus that are actually authentic. <laughs> what a clever forger. But we're smart. We know it's a forgery because it looks authentic and doesn't look like a forgery. This is welcome to the world of topsy-turvy thinking, right? In this world of topsy-turvy thinking, you don't actually have to make a reasonable argument. All you have to do is throw, blow smoke in the face of whoever's coming with something new. And along comes this guy, Andrew Bernard. I don't know who he is, but he's somehow affiliated with Oxford. And he's got the best argument of all. It's like a kind of biblical CSI. What does he say? I know that the Jesus wife papyrus is a forgery. And how do I know that? I know that because the forger slipped up. How did he do that? He was using this interlineal version of, um, of uh, the Gospel of Thomas 
the special version of the Gospel of Thomas that went online in, in the year in 2000 or something like that. He thinks it's 1997, but I think it was 2000, 2001. And there's a mistake in that version. And the forger, not knowing that there is a mistake, put the mistake inside his forgery. That's how. I mean, think about it. Here's a guy forging. He doesn't realize there's a typo in the manuscript. He copies the typo, and Andrew catches him red-handed because the forger didn't realize he's copying a typo. Isn't that clever? There's one problem with that. And he says, this is a post-Da Vinci Code forger. Somebody read the Da Vinci Code says, hey, I can make a lot of money. I'm going to forge a Jesus had a wife papyrus, sell it for big ba bucks on eBay. Right? There's one problem, and that is because in 1980, two scholars saw this papyrus, commented on it, and attested to the fact that it says that Jesus had a wife. 1980. So here's a question that I've asked that nobody's given me an answer. How do you forge something in the year 2000 that people can already examine in 1980? Is the forger also a time traveler? He forged it in 2000, traveled back in time, showed it to a scholar in 1980. The guy said it's cool and it's authentic. Then he ran back in 2000 and cashed in. But you see, in the world of demonization, marginalization, and discredit, you don't actually have to make sense. All you have to do is shout forgery, and then the real scholars, they're not up for the fight. They duck, they go silent, nobody talks. Everybody else shuts up. You don't have tenure, you shut up. Everybody shuts up and the field is wide open to the naysayers. The people who know how to attack people personally, demonize people, say that they're in it for the money, say that they're stupid and they fell in for forgeries, say that behind every artifact that disagrees with them is a master forger, and then everybody shuts up and the item that should be front page news around the world Jesus had a wife, says early gospel, nobody talks about.